I was born in 1937, which just before World War II, and as most people know, during the war, you cannot buy gasoline, uh, and it was a great problem getting around, you couldn't drive, so most people used public transportation. Consequently, trains were very popular in Philadelphia, and I spent a lot of time on trains. I really enjoyed them. I also had the opportunity to visit my grandfather, who lived about one block from North Philadelphia Station. So when I visited him on Sundays, I was able to go down with him and view the trains. After the war was over, I was eight years old at that time, and my father came home and HO gauge was very popular. So my toy trains that Santa used to bring were no longer of interest to me because the HO gauge was much more accurate. About 1965, when a friend and I started to look at standard gauge trains, and joined an organization called the Train Collectors Association. One of their meets had a very nice selection of what we call O-scale. O-scale is what we have right here. These are all O-scale and they are mostly brass, mostly from Japan and Korea, produced during the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I brought home one piece and I thought, boy, this is really a lot better and why don't I start collecting these? So I collected over 100 pieces of uh, O scale. That includes both locomotives and rolling stock. By the time I was ready to retire in 2002, I said, look, I have all these trains. I'm either going to sell them or I'm going to build a layout. And my good friend, uh, Steve Grabowski, I can't remember how I met Steve, but without him it would not have been possible. He was the guy that designed the basic concept of going over and under, so to speak, where you just don't see the train going around, but you see the train disappear into the subway, goes into the, uh, the, the mountain in the background, and then comes, uh, comes out again. So you don't see it for a while, which is really adds to the mystery of the whole thing. It seems bigger than it really is. Of course, being born and raised in Philadelphia, I figured, well, it has to be the Pennsylvania Railroad, which was at one time one of the largest corporations in the world. And uh, I've always liked the Pensy because, first of all, I used to go to school on the Pennsylvania Railroad, the old red cars you see right here. And I, uh, I just had an attachment to it, plus many more uh, models were available on the Pennsylvania Railroad. And I had a professional painter by the name of Harry Heike do all the professional painting. So which, which mild weathering, uh, which I think makes them look more realistic. The center of this layout is what we have right behind me. This is a uh, scratch built roundhouse uh, uh, modeled after the Pennsylvania 46th Street roundhouse. I remember most of the locomotives and cars here because uh, as a kid, it was so, they were so fascinating, and some of these old red cars that you see on the passenger train here also existed way up into the 60s. I had a very happy childhood, and uh, this was uh, sort of bringing it back.